sure all of you just took a bite of soup and you're like, oh, he's talking to us. We Good afternoon, and thank you so much for coming to this meeting. Uh, Heather and I were just talking about how we're blown away about how many of you came, and that warms our hearts, makes a little bit more work for Heather in terms of like lunch and getting everyone some food. Uh, please feel free to just keep eating. Um, as we make our way through this meeting, we also want to be sensitive to your time. Thank you for, uh, if, if you did come this morning, uh, and then you just hung out until this meeting, or you came this morning and left and now come back. Regardless, you're carving out some time today for this meeting, and we so, so appreciate that. Uh, so let's get right into it. Welcome. Uh, to, you're here to learn about our 2019 summer youth trips. So let's dive right into it. This uh, summer, uh, we are having uh, service and learning trips. Uh, the middle schoolers are going to Chicago and that's on June 8th to the 14th. And the high schoolers are going uh, to Atlanta on June 21st to the 29th. Uh, you will be getting uh, registration, excuse me, registration forms that will have this info on it. Uh, and so know by what we mean by middle school is has completed seventh grade through ninth grade. So has completed seventh grade uh, to has completed ninth grade. High school is has completed ninth grade to has completed 12th grade. So I've said this a couple of times to the ninth graders, uh, probably already know it, but yes, ninth graders, this is, the, uh, this is the, the one and only summer where you could potentially go to either or both of these service and learning trips. So those are our destinations. We are really excited about it. Uh, and so first off, why uh, are we calling it a service and learning trip? Some of you uh, uh, may uh, be saying, why are they referring to it as that? Well, it's not for an accidental reason. It's for very intentional. A service and learning trip is essentially a mission trip. But the term mission trip has acquired some negative uh, connotations over the years for different reasons. One of them is uh, that mission trip uh, in, in in previous generations, or even still to a certain extent today, uh, implies a conversion trip, that you are going there to uh, convert the people of that place to, uh, to your faith, or to, in this case, to Christianity and whatnot. Um, and that's not our ultimate goal with this trip. Also, there's this connotation of we have so much and they have so little, and so we're going to be a benefit, a gift to them with how much we have, how much we have to give to them. It's very one-sided, uh, and so that's not something that we want to be about with these trips. And the final one is uh, an enforced inequality, um, lock, uh, lack of relationship and partnership building. Um, and so, again, stemming off this idea of this imbalance between the parties of us going to where we will be going and the, and the people of the community that we'll be going to. Uh, and that what we're really about is creating a relationship, uh, an equal relationship where we have things that obviously we can bring and teach them, but at the same time, we are going expecting and hoping to learn so much from what, they're, from what the communities are doing, uh, how the gospel and how the ministry of Christ is being enacted in the communities that we'll be going to. And it's, it's an it's a equal partnership, and it's uh, all about relationship building. And we really feel strongly about that. So that's why we arrived at this term of service and learning trip. Um, so on a service and learning trip, it's pretty self-explanatory. We serve and we learn. Uh, we come into a community to serve with our brothers and sisters in that community. Not to do something new, but to participate in the beautiful and unique ministries that are already happening there. And we come into a community to learn from our brothers and sisters uh, and to uh, brothers and sisters in that community to learn about uh, history, culture, and context, and to engage in relationship building. So that's our goal for our service and learning trip. 
And so this brings me to the organization that we are uh, partnering with for this, that is Serve Boldly. Uh, Serve Boldly has a really great uh, story. Uh, so Serve Boldly is a young and growing ch uh, church youth trip nonprofit with roots in the ELCA in our church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. In 2011, three ELCA congregations, in an effort to provide youth with a meaningful opportunity to serve uh, grounded in a Lutheran understanding of loving your neighbor, gathered their youth groups in Nashville. That first trip sparked the beginning of many relationships, partnerships with congregations, connections with community organizations, and deep bonds with those they served. This organic coalition uh, quickly grew to include other congregations from around the nation and today uh, offer eight different trip locations in cities all over the country. Uh, this is a group that Heather and I, uh, we became aware of this past year and we got really excited about uh, quickly. Um, one, because it's kind of grassroots, uh, and another because we can see our values and our mission uh, f for these trips uh, invested in what they are all about at Serve Boldly. And know that you can, you can Google them, Serve Boldly, um, and you can, I got a lot of all of this information from their website, and it has all about what they are about and all the different places that they go. So pretty cool stuff. Um, and we will be, what's cool is we will be engaged with a congregation in Chicago or in Atlanta that is doing, um, that is doing uh, social justice ministries and is engaged in the community, is engaged in the relationships uh, in a very intentional way. And so we're really excited about that. So Sir Boldly uh, has some values. Again, I got these right off their website, so I'm going to speak as if I'm speaking from Sir Boldly. First, their first value is uh, Lutheran. We are proud of our Lutheran identity, and it guides every aspect of our organization. The very call to serve comes from a deep Lutheran passion to love our neighbors. Our programming, worship, themes, devotions, and all, all reflect a Lutheran theology centered on the grace and love of God. We are happy to further the ministry of uh, ELCA congregations in each community we serve. Another value is uh, accompaniment. Accompaniment is living together in harmony with mutual respect and inclusivity. Uh, learning to live like Jesus means that we will break down boundaries that divide God's people and equally share in God's mission together. This means we do not attempt to force a cookie-cutter model of ministry on local communities, but rather attempt to further existing ministries by grounding our plans in the ongoing relationships we have with community leaders. Uh, there's just a couple more values that they share. Faith as much as the trips are about accompanying and serving others, we also desire that all involved would have an experience that enriches their faith. We believe that, th that through service, devotions, community, and worship, the Holy Spirit speaks to us and our awareness of God's presence in our, li in, in our, li in our lives grow. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be at the end there. <laughs> Youth. Every aspect of our programming is designed with youth in mind. We think youth have so much to offer the church, but are not given the opportunity as often as they should be. We want to empower youth and provide that opportunity for youth to be the leaders we know they can be. We hope that youth return to their congregations to lead their local communities with a passionate energy for faith and justice. Uh, I read through those values and I, I just had a grin on my face because I just said, yes, that is exactly what we value here at Nativity, what Heather and I are trying to uh, foster among our youth and youth ministry, and the exact type of experience we would want. And so um, I hope that you would agree with that. Uh, as I was reading through that, that just really struck a chord with me. I hope it strikes a chord with you, and that's why we ultimately decided to move forward with uh, Serve Boldly. So... That's uh, Serve Boldly, and again, you can always check them out, look them up online as well to learn more. Um, do we have any youth? Uh, uh, am I putting anyone on the spot for the first time, or is there, s okay. All right, so this is the opportunity for anyone who has gone on a, uh, a summer trip before. 
uh, youth summer trip before with Nativity to come on up and share your story, your experience, and why you think it's a good idea, especially for, from the perspective of someone who maybe has never gone on one before. Uh, is there anyone who might like to? And is Heather going to go around and try and guilt someone into doing it? Oh, s some people are standing up. Yay! We do this thing in confirmation where we thank people for being brave when they come up and share. So we're going to say thank you to, uh, to Raya and Betsy for doing that. Rhea. <laughs> Rhea and Betsy uh, for being brave. So we say thank you for being brave. Thank you for being brave, Rhea and Betsy. Um, we went on a couple trips. I we went on this one to Pine Ridge, which is uh, a Native American reservation in South Dakota, and we, you know, Kelly from church. She grew up there, and we got to learn a lot about life there, and we just got to immerse ourselves in the culture and we they told us a lot of stories about how hard it can be on a reservation but there are a lot of joy-filled moments as well it was a very moving trip um, and there are definitely a lot of tears a lot of group hugs but a lot of laughter too and we were all closer to each other by the end of the trip yeah, that was just another point right there is like even any of the trips that you go on, you're going to be closer to everyone who you go with at the end of the trip. Because when we first went, I remember this happened um, on all the trips, but specifically, I don't really remember how old I was, but we went to Detroit one year and I was really shy because I didn't really know anyone on that trip and I was kind of like, well, I knew them, but like not really, you know. And so we're in the, the car together and we're driving up and I was kind of just sitting kind of like, oh, okay. But then by the end of the trip, we're all going back. We're like pushing each other. We're like laughing because, you know, you grow together. And then so you just you make a lot more um, bonds with people, I guess you could say. And it's fun, too. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rhea and Betsy. So what are we doing in Chicago? So for those of you, this is the uh, middle school trip. So the seventh through ninth graders, uh, you're eligible for this. So this, again, comes right from the uh, from Serve Boldly's uh, website. Uh, so, so Chicago is an amazingly diverse city made up of dozens and dozens of unique neighborhoods full of culture and opportunity. We are committed to serve this great city in ways that support and build up our partners in their unique contexts. You may find yourself serving in a meal site or at a food pantry. You may be part of a team that does outreach to men and women who are homeless. You may join in the fun and energy of ministry with kids in a summer program. Wherever you find yourself, you will fall in love with this city. Of course, we'll hit a few of the iconic city sites from the Bean and Lincoln Park Zoo to Buckingham Fountain. It will be a week you will not soon forget. So that's a little taste of Chicago uh, with the middle school trip. Again, that's seventh, uh, completed seventh through ninth grade. And so uh, this is our Chicago uh, tr uh, trip travel sort of uh, layout. So uh, we will leave Nativity in two large vans on Saturday, June 8th in the early morning, uh, exact time to be determined. Uh, stop at Wisconsin Dells for a day of water park fun and uh, group bonding. So we'll do some, so we're doing some fun on the way there, and then uh, spend the night at Bethlehem Lutheran in Portage, Wisconsin. They are so pumped to have us crash in their church basement for the night. I already I've talked to them on the phone. I talked to their pastor and I talked to their council president. And both of them were pretty excited about it. Uh, and then we'll worship at Bethlehem Lutheran uh, the morning of Sunday, June 9th. And then uh, we'll continue on and arrive in the afternoon at, Chica at the Chicago site for an amazing week. And then we'll leave Chicago the morning of Friday, June, 9th, June 14th. And then we'll return to Nativity that evening. So that's the trip. Uh, 
generally speaking, for Chicago. And now I think I'm going to be passing this off to Heather to introduce Atlanta. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So Atlanta is for. Oh, yeah. Um, so for Atlanta, this is for high school students, so ninth through 12th grade, and you did not miss here that ninth graders, you are eligible to go on either or or both if your parents give you permission. Um, so for Atlanta, so Ben put these slides together. I asked him to, so I'm not totally throwing them under the bus, but I completely have to read them to you. So <laughs> again, this is from the website. Come to our new site in Atlanta and serve with a focus on civil rights and Martin Luther King's legacy. While you spend plenty of time feeding the hungry and engaging in other meaningful ministry, you will also visit the Center for Civil and Human Rights and other important historic locations. By learning from our nation's history and understanding of the current struggle some still face, you will be serving your neighbors and growing and gaining compassion for all of God's people. I emailed the site director down there because I was hoping for a little bit more information. I mean, it sounds great. Um, and he said they are still putting the summer together. Although we have been referring to these trips as service and learning, I think it would be more appropriate for Atlanta to say this is a learning and service. Our service times will be cut down by about half, and we will spend more time engaging in a learning environment. One of our other stops that they assured me we will be going to is Ebenezer Baptist, which was MLK's church that he preached out of. So I'm really excited for that. What it's going to look like is we are going to leave... Nativity in a large van on Friday, June 21st. What? Uh, I don't know. It is a very long trip, and I will tell you, it is good that it is June 21st because that is the summer solstice, and we will need as much daylight as humanly possible. Our plan is to drive three quarters of the way. We are going to be in that van for 13 to 15 hours. It is a heck of a trip. We are probably going to leave before the sun is awake, and you guys can roll out of bed wearing your pajamas and roll right into the van and go back to sleep. That's cool. Uh, we are going to be staying somewhere in Tennessee, and we say somewhere because it is either going to be Nashville or Memphis. I am going to work with our team who ends up signing up to decide which location we're going to stay at. We are going to spend the night there on um, Friday evening. Saturday, we're going to wake up, and we're going to be able to explore that city and historic sites that that city offers us. Um, and group bonding. Yeah, yeah. We'll spend the night again, and then in the morning, we'll wake up, we'll worship, and we will finish the drive to Atlanta. Um, okay, and we'll arrive in the afternoon. On the way home, we're going to leave Friday morning. Hopefully, we're going to make it to St. Louis. We think, question mark, maybe. We have to figure out our full itinerary. If you were to drive straight through, though, it's a 17-hour drive, so it does require overnights. So this is why this trip is a bit longer. It is, you are going to be absolutely exhausted, but hopefully filled with renewal and new energy and new spirit after uh, learning about civil rights in a, in a more complete fashion. Okay. Oh, do you want me to do this? Go All right, typical day on site. Breakfast, we wake up, we eat, right? We're hungry. Uh, morning devos. You're going to spend about a half hour. This is for both locations, by the way, Chicago and um, and Atlanta. You're going to spend about a half hour in a devotional period with some scripture and um, journaling. It is time for you to be alone with your thoughts and prepare yourself for the day ahead. Um, from 9 to 3, we'll be on ministry sites that is serving others. And then free times and shower time. Dinner. Evening activities. Evening activities will vary. Those will be the times when we're going to the museums, or if you're in Chicago, going to the Bean, going to the zoo. That's like fun time. Uh, and then worship. So what might be different for this trip than yous that have been along on others is that because we are working with Serving Boldly, we will not be the only church there. You will be making new friends from who knows where, they could be from Massachusetts. They could be from California. They could be another Minneapolis congregation. Um, 
but you're going to end up sharing this week with them when we're on site. So we've got worship, which is whole group, and then church time. So this will be just nativity, um, and then your, your trip leaders, and then lights out. One thing I do want to say, this is probably going to be very, very close to Chicago. Atlanta, because we are having those split times, our service time could look like a 9 to noon or a 9 to 1, and then we'll spend more time learning. All right, I'm going to talk fundraisers. So we have three fundraisers currently on our schedule. It is the pancake breakfast, the silent auction, and the plant sale. These are three historic um, fundraisers that we have done for many years, and I have a fairly good suspicion how much we're going to earn at each one of them. Um, dates are up there. I won't repeat this all back to you. If you want, you can take a picture of it with your phone. What I can tell you, though, is that with the pancake breakfast on that morning of, it's kind of an all hands on deck to run in shifts. Because we no longer have the um, 1040 service going on, we are going to have our pancake breakfast in this space, so that will make it a little easier rather than having to haul dishes and food up and down stairs. Silent auction. We moved forward in the calendar because the end uh, or the beginning of summer, the end of the school year is a really challenging time. Um, and this is just two weeks before Easter, so we can build Easter baskets. Isn't that fun? Um, and then plant sale, that's pretty historic. We do that every year. What we are looking for though, and maybe this is going on, okay. If you are benefiting from fundraisers, we anticipate your participation in them. However, we do also need a committee of six to eight people to kind of chair it, to plan it, to figure out advertising, to work with our calendar, and to recruit um, the rest of the team and figure out the shift schedule. So just know that those are some expectations that we do have. So registration forms, I do have them if you're ready to sign, or you can take it home if you need to think about it. $100 is due for your deposit. If you choose to participate in all the fundraisers, you can expect to pay 300 in total. So 200 more throughout the course of the next six months. If you say, our family is busy, we just don't have time, and you will be honest, we don't need it, Heather, that's fine, your bill is 650. So you can see that's how much we anticipate earning. Now if you're looking at that 300 and going, uh, Heather, we got a budget. I don't know if you know tax season has shifted things around a little bit. We always have scholarships available. Always, 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 and if you want to add more than those three fundraisers, I can work with you to figure out what we can work. These numbers are based off uh, uh, serve boldly needed to have a placeholder sort of group size, and so this is based off of a size for middle school of a group of 12 middle school youth with three adults, so a total of 15 in a group and then a high school size that we based off of eight youth uh, and two uh, adults going with. Um, those, they already know that those, those sizes of groups are susceptible to change. We hope we'll at least meet those numbers. If not, it would be great to exceed them and have to deal with that. And if, it, if, it get, if the group's bigger than that, then your price tag will go down because more people are contributing. So just so you know. And I think the next slide What? Who made this slide? I did. <laughs> I made it. I, I made it after worship last night, and I think you can tell I was tired at that point. Thank you. The other J month. The other J month. J and, oh, the other other J month. January. January. Thank you. I I do. I. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Glenn Seafelt. I'm one of the pastors here. And uh, I love the outdoors, as many of you know. And <clears throat> for years, I've led backpacking trips, but haven't been uh, in some time. So this summer, we are going to Hell Roaring Basin. Any of you been there? Maybe you've felt like you've been in hell. <clears throat> it's very appropriate for a spiritual experience, actually. Uh, Hell Roaring Basin is near Red Lodge, 15 miles southwest of Red Lodge, just across the Continental Divide. And <clears throat> the, the 
thing that uh, I like about this is it provides uh, its beginning to intermediate for youth and adults. Uh, youth need to be going into the ninth grade, uh, uh, completed eighth grade going into ninth grade. And <clears throat> the reason being is because there are some physical challenges uh, to the backpacking trip. I need to tell you a little bit more about the difficulty. One of the things we're doing to make it more of a beginner is we will be driving up to a high plateau and then hiking into the valley rather than hiking up and then hiking down. Any of you backpackers? Some of you are backpackers? Okay. Well, the good thing is uh, if, if we can get the vehicles, we'll be renting vehicles. If we can get the vehicles that can get up the the very, um, let's just say it's a faith experience to drive up the road. It's uh, basically a gravel road plowed into the side of a mountain with no guardrails. I know that, but you got to have faith, right? You got to have faith. So uh, the plateau, um, <clears throat> we park up there and then we hike down into the valley. In the valley, we'll do base camp, which means that we won't be moving every day. Um, and there's uh, opportunities for, I think I have a bigger picture of there, the one on the, shows more of the lakes. There is wonderful cutthroat uh, trout in these lakes, so if any of you are a, tr a trout person. Um, but each day we'll be taking day trips, and some of those will be peaking. Any of you know what a peak Peak day is basically you climb to the highest elevation or the peak in the area and weather permitting. So we are leaving on Saturday the 20th and will return the following Saturday on the 27th. Now the cost <clears throat> at the outside, this is a, a conservative number. It won't be more than $350 unless for some reason gasoline goes through the roof. Um, but here's the challenge. We can only take 15. And if we have more than that, then we'll have to take two groups. And that we can do that. So uh, my wife and I will be uh, leaders on the trip. Derry, Derek Blanksma, who is, grew up in Montana, grew up in this area, is a tremendous uh, geomorphologist, which means he knows a lot about rock and formations and, and um, fossils. And <clears throat> uh, one of the things that I guarantee is we will eat really well. That's a promise. Uh, you've maybe been on backpacking trips where you skimped on food. It's been all the dehydrated stuff and everything tastes the same, looks like mush. Um, we take in real food and we enjoy the local fare like trout and trout dinners and homemade bread and pies and cakes and all those good things. So, questions about this backpacking trip? Yes, Miss Heather. Do they have moose? Uh, you know, I I don't know that, but they have moose. <laughs> they it's not the same, and not to be confused. <laughs> Other questions? Uh, in order to keep the cost down, if, if we were working in an outfitter, the cost would be close to 1000 a person. Uh, so we have all the backpacks, we have the tents, we have all the gear, so we keep the cost down. And if anybody, uh, like I said, 350 at the outside, if we spend less than that, we'll reimburse uh, people for that cost. Um, so we provide it all if anybody needs equipment, including sleeping bags or sleeping pads, so they don't have to buy a $70 or $80 pad or $100 sleeping bag. We have those as well. Uh, a few years ago, a very generous donor donated um, some money so that we could purchase equipment so that we could uh, help uh, youth and adults experience the back, back, backwater, backlands, uh, outdoors um, without having to spend a lot. Okay, other questions? One of the things that's important is because this trip will fill up uh, quickly, um, 
we, it is open to adults and youth. So adults in the room, youth in the room, uh, just let me know. Um, is there a registration form for this coming, or do they have one? Not yet. There will be shortly. There will be uh, on Wednesday for sure. All right. Are we waiting on? And they'll also be online, right? Okay. Great. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. We have, uh, yes, yeah, so we do not have a registration form for the wilderness trip yet. It will be coming real soon, uh, and we will make sure that you get that information, whether it's online or tangible paper, in your hand. So now comes the great opportunity for questions for any of the trips, for the service and learning trips, or for the, uh, for the wilderness trip. And Heather is going to have a floating mic to go around so that the people who are going to be watching this um, online uh, can hear your questions and also hear either Heather or my uh, answers, see if we can get stumped. Where are we staying in Chicago? In Chicago, uh, I don't know the exact congregation where we will be staying, but to my knowledge, they house you in an ELCA congregation in that context. Heather, is is that your understanding as well? Yeah, that's your. Yep. So so we'll be we'll be sleeping on a church basement for a week. Uh, uh, we will be uh, bringing sleeping bags and bringing air mattresses and the whatnot, so that we will be as comfortable as as humanly possible while sleeping on a church basement floor. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, over there. Wait, wait, wait. She would like to know where you'd be staying in Atlanta. <laughs> Same answer. A church basement floor. <laughs> <laughs> What's church basement? Who knows? Yeah, so <laughs> you guys are doing this so on the purpose. An, so the, so the, overall, whether we are traveling to our destination or we are at our destination, we're sleeping on church basement floors. There you go. Are we taking the vans to Atlanta also? Yes, yes. we are. Yes, and that's why it's so. That's a big reason why we uh, are giving the deadline for the registration, so that we know what our group size is, so we know how many vehicles, how many vehicles, uh, the 15 or 12, 15 passenger vans we need to reserve to rent and all that. So, yeah. So for the wilderness trip. Sure. If adults have limited vacation time over sure. the summer and a youth who's extremely interested in attending, yeah. um, is can you sign up a youth without an adult with, or is that something where you're expecting pairs? No, not not expecting pairs. The, I, I think I'm pretty sure that uh, Pastor Glenn set it up so that the completed eighth grade age is one where he feels confident that even if a youth goes without a parent or f older family member, that they still would be able to have a good time to function in the group and, and, and have great experience. Yeah, uh, so. your chaperone for that would be Glenn and Cheryl. And so you know too, Cheryl is a nurse, so you have a medic on site. And yes. when we say Glenn is an outdoorsman, my family changed our emergency apocalypse plan to go to Glenn's house. Because <laughs> he will keep you alive. Uh, my question was just for the wilderness one. When you get back on the 27th, is that in the morning or is that like you get back at night of the 27th? It's a great question. I'm going to speculate night. Yeah, I because be you're wrong. coming all the way from Montana. So did it say, I, I remind me, it, so probably going to be a, I, it's it's probably going to be a two-day trip again to get from Montana to to here. And uh, so I would imagine evening, maybe count on evening, afternoon. Be a great question to um, ask Pastor Glenn next time that you see him. I don't know that for sure. Any other questions? We got another one. Oh. Is all of the information we just discussed online? 
So it will be? OK. It will be. Yes, yeah, so this, so know that if nothing else, this video is going um, online. We'll be posting it. And so you can always come back to it and check it out. Uh, if you'd like, I can send me an email, and I can send you this presentation. Uh, attach the PowerPoint file, and you can view it there. Uh, but I, are we putting together an actual sheet with all this information? I don't know that that's necessarily going to be the case. But uh, yeah. So is that good enough? So if, if, if you would like to tangibly have this in an email, this uh, PowerPoint file, send me an email, ben at nativitychurch.org, and I will send it your way. But we have recorded this whole thing. You're, uh, you're all on? No. You, well, you, you are. You're you on are camera. on camera right now, and we're recording it, and we're going to be posting it for those that couldn't be here today. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. I have a question. Sure. Who's in confirmation? Who needs their service points still? I got a good one for you today, guys. We need to do dishes and clean up. So any confirmation kids that want to hang out, that'd be awesome. Yep. That'll count. That'll Yay! do it. And actually, so if you're in confirmation, going on one of these trips or participating in Summer Stretch will qualify for all of your service, learning, and growth experiences. Sure. Right? Is that oh, what yeah. we said? That's what we've been okay. saying. That's what we've been saying. So yeah. Um, so if that's a big motivator for you to potentially go on one of these trips, cool. Uh, and it, you have a great experience. So any last questions? Good? All right, then let's quick close with a word of prayer. Thank you all so much for coming. Let's pray. Loving, gracious God, I lift up all the people in this room right now, especially I uh, lift up the youth who are discerning whether or not uh, to go on one of these trips. Some of them maybe have already officially decided I'm definitely going. Some are maybe still unsure and still discerning. I ask you to send your Holy Spirit into that discernment process. I ask that you uh, bless these families uh, and this community as we move toward these trips. Uh, and I ask that uh, those trips be uh, a blessing to the youth and to the communities and to the people that we will experience and we will interact with and that we will build loving relationships with uh, this summer. I ask for your grace and your love to just engulf us and to send us out into our, our world this afternoon uh, to be your light, to be your love uh, into the friend groups we have, into the families, into the communities, the peer groups, all of that, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming. And... Uh, is there more food? Oh, and the registration forms. Don't forget to grab those. They're right there. Registration forms. To grab that. Thank you all so much. Feel free to talk to us afterward.